Hi, today we're going to talk about the dissociation of water and how that can help us understand hydrogen ion concentrations and hydroxide ion concentrations. So we talked a little bit before about the self-ionization of water in which water can break apart into H plus and OH minus. And of course, the equilibrium constant for this is given by the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration. And there's no contribution from the reactant because the reactant is water, which is a pure liquid. And that is a special equilibrium constant that we call KW, W for water. And the value of Kw at 25 Celsius is pretty much right around 10 to the minus 14th. And so that's always what we're gonna be using as our shortcut value. So what does this tell us about aqueous solutions? Basically, anytime you have any amount of water, you're going to have some of it dissociating to form H plus and OH minus, which means that any aqueous solution is going to have both H plus ions and OH minus ions. And no matter what you put in your aqueous solution, the equilibrium constant for water, Kw, will always be 10 to the minus 14th at 25 Celsius. If you take this in conjunction with the expression for the equilibrium constant, Kw, what this means is you can't have both lots of acid, H plus, and lots of base, OH minus. If one of those values is large, in order to make the equilibrium constant equal to 10 to the minus 14, the other one has to be correspondingly small. Now, it's very nice that these two are related because it tells us that if you know H+, plus, you can calculate OH- minus and vice versa. Although usually H+, plus is the one that we know for reasons I'll talk about later. If you rearrange that equation, then you can get that the H+, plus concentration is Kw over OH-, minus or the way I remember it, 10 to the minus 14th over the OH minus concentration. And then the OH minus concentration is equal to Kw over H plus, or the way I remember it, 10 to the minus 14th over H plus. So we can easily calculate H plus concentrations from OH minus concentrations and vice versa. If we have an H plus concentration of 0 0.01 molar, and we want to find out the hydroxide ion concentration, we take the equation that I showed you on the previous slide, and we have hydroxide is 10 to the minus 14th over H plus, which is 10 to the minus 14th over 0 0.01, and that will be 10 to the minus 12th. Now, let's look at the reverse calculation given H plus, calculate OH minus. So here's our equation. Let's plug in the H plus concentration, and you can see that we started with a very, very tiny concentration of H+, and that usually means that we're going to have a large concentration, relatively speaking, of OH-. And indeed, when we run the number through our calculator, we get 1.60 times 10 to the minus 2. You may have heard people talking about something being acidic or something being basic. What does that mean in terms of solutions where you have both H+, ions and OH minus ions in solution. Let's start with the idea that a neutral solution has equal concentrations of H plus and OH minus ions. In an acidic solution, we have more H plus than OH minus ions. Now, that covers a broad spectrum of solutions. Obviously, even amongst acidic solutions, you're gonna have some that have more H plus than others. And so we'll definitely be talking about acid strengths later on. And then finally, we have our basic solution where the OH minus concentration is greater than the H plus concentration, or the way I've written it, H plus is less than OH minus. Now, one more thing we need to talk about as we talk about H plus and OH minus concentrations is the idea of P notation. One thing you'll notice is that H plus concentrations in a solution can span quite a few orders of magnitude. I would say about 15 orders of magnitude, which is a lot. And it is easiest to use a logarithmic scale when you're talking about that many orders of magnitude. And so we've developed this notation, the P notation, where the P of, and I put X here because that could be anything, the P of anything is going to be negative log of that thing. And so the P notation that you're probably most familiar with, and the one we're gonna tackle first, 
is the pH, where the pH equals the negative log of H+. Plus. The reason we use this more than any other P notation is because pH is something that we can measure very easily using a pH electrode. And so this will come up over and over again. We're always trying to figure out what the pH will be and sometimes not some of these other things. pH is what we can measure that will help us calculate all the other P notation stuff that we're going to learn about. H plus and OH minus concentrations really help us understand how basic something is, how acidic something is, and also help us understand what is going on in that solution. And that's something that we're going to be talking about more in the coming days. Hope this was helpful and I will see you again soon.